Hey everyone, it's Kim, the Homeschooling Grammy, and today I am going to be doing a flip through of Math Lessons for a Living Education um, by Masterbooks, level three. I'm just gonna be covering the um, regular curriculum book, but stay tuned because my plan is to also do a flip through of this book, Practice Makes Perfect. Um, I think this is something new that Masterbooks just started doing um, recently. So stick around. I'm going to do a video of this one as well. But today, just this. So stick around and we'll get started. Started. the beautiful part of this curriculum is this is it this is the math curriculum this is level three it's one book that's all you need I actually did a review of this curriculum just recently um, and if you're interested I will leave an eye card at the top so here we go let's start at the beginning so here is the scope and sequence um, there are 36 lessons it also tells you what kind of manipulatives that you will need in the back of the book. They have some special puzzle answer keys and whatever, all of that. So here's your scope and sequence. So it starts out at review of place value, odds and evens counting by twos, fives and tens. And it goes all the way down to um, Roman numerals and they cover multiplying and dividing, et cetera, et cetera. So of course, then it has um, how to use the course, the course description, the course objectives, all of that good stuff for you in the beginning. And it has a whole page about the manipulatives. Um, and really, it's just stuff that you have around your house. It's nothing special. That makes it really nice. You don't have to order anything. There are no nothing special that you have to do for this curriculum. Most of what you need, you have right around your house. And then it gives you an, a suggested daily schedule. So it'll tell you, okay, week one and day, th you know, one through five. And it tells you what pages you should complete or whatever. If you like to do that kind of thing, if you're all about keeping a schedule, I tend to more fly by the seat of my pants and we move ahead as I see fit. Um, you know, cause some days if the lesson is going really well, we'll do like, you know, two or three pages instead of the one page or whatever. So there you go. You got that idea. So it gives you all the way to the end. And then every um, chapter or lesson is set up the same way. So I'm going to skip ahead to lesson two because we just started this. Oh, actually, we're further than I thought. Hold on. Let's skip ahead to lesson four. So here's lesson four. So it'll begin with a story and it's Charlie and Charlotte, which are these two young children that are homeschooled. Um, and you know, it's a really cute story that goes at the beginning of each lesson. And they're gonna be reviewing subtraction and including borrowing concepts in this lesson. So on exercise one for this, it would be this simple page, you see, this is lesson one for, or exercise one, I should say, for um, lesson four. I forgot that quickly. See, that's what happens when you're a grandmother and your brain falls out. Anyways, <laughs> really simple, short and sweet exercises. And that's what I like about this. Really quick and to the point. And then it'll move on to... Exercise number two. Here's a look at exercise number three for the week. And like I said, there's times where I was like, well, if she just blows through the page, then we do another page. She blows through two pages. We've even been known to do three pages. It's, you know, whatever works for your family. And that's why homeschooling is beautiful. So after less exercise four, you'll have exercise five, and that will bring you to the end of the week. 
and then you'll go on to lesson five, which of course, once again, you'll have the same kind of setup. You'll have the story, you'll have your different exercises. So I'm gonna show you though, that there are times in here where there's like a whole review section. So as you can see, there's lots of word problems. We do word problems and it's really cool because they give the step-by-step -step, um, on how to do word problems. They show them what it is that they need to look for in a word problem. So here, I'm gonna give you an example. So solving word problems. Review the steps to solve a word problem. Read the problem carefully. Ask what is the question. Circle the numbers that you're going to need to use to solve the problem. And then you're gonna think it through. Will you need to add or subtract? So then you're gonna list or underline the keywords that will tell you what you need to do. If your word problem has the words all together, you know that you will need to add. Subtracting will tell you how much more or less one number is than another. And the last step is to think about and check your answer to see if it makes sense. So it made it really easy um, teaching word problems. Like this curriculum really was um, the game changer for my granddaughter as far as that goes. Okay. So, and it just keeps moving on and on in that way. So I will go ahead and show you like some of the back. So here's some fractions and some measurement and some time telling, um, rounding to the 1000s and estimation, some mental math. And as you can see here, we're starting to get into division The multiplication table. So less up to less than 25. Now you're introducing solving for the unknowns. So kind of like a little bit of algebra. Pretty cool. Some critical thinking skills over here. So under here it says mark under the number sentence that means the same as the number. Some more mental math. Let's see, we're gonna skip ahead some more. Dividing color each of these shapes and then write the fraction again for each shape. Some three digit addition, some subtracted, subtraction, some rounding to the nearest 100 and nearest 10. And here's a review page where they're covering um, ounces and pounds, feet and yards, months and years pounds, foot, yards, miles, et cetera, et cetera. And if you hear clunking, it is my dog underneath the table going chasing after the cat. Some Roman numerals. Finding the perimeter. Yep. So then if you come to the back of the book, Manipulative. So there's going to be a place value village, a place value village counting map, a hundreds counter, and my one hundreds chart, multiplication facts for copy work, division facts for copy work, and multiplication chart. So we didn't really use the place value village. I started to at first, and I don't know. It didn't really work for us. I didn't like that. But some people may find it amazing. Um, but yeah, so all of these is what you would use with your place value village. But here's a multiplication facts for copy work, which I'm big on copy work. I think copy work is really amazing. Even in math, we do a lot of it in our English and I also, you know, our language arts and I also do it in math. So here's a bunch of facts and whatever and multiplication chart in the back. And then unlike level two where there wasn't an answer key, there's a solution manual in the back of the book. So you can see all the answers and how to get them. And there you have it, that 
is Math Lessons for a Living Education. Right, everyone, that's a wrap. That's Math Lessons for a Living Education, level three. I hope that this video was a blessing to you. I tried not to be too long-winded and I tried to go through it fairly quickly. So until next time, take care, God bless, and I will talk to you again soon.